Bridgerton, we're back. I'm bored. And it kind of piqued my interest a little bit. So let's see. Let's see. So we all sitting around at dinner trying to figure out who Lady Whistledown is. And the Duke is at dinner with them. So child, now we got the Duke and, and Daphne, you know, insult flirting with each other. Later that night, the mama and the older brother meet in the office. The brother don't approve of the matchmaking scheme. He's like, look, that man ain't gonna marry her. Oh, the mama like, look, I know about that huzzy you housing across town. You wanna talk about responsibility. Oh, Lord. So now the next morning, the brother break up with his soprano. She couldn't sing no way. So, child, we had another party. I think this is Vo Hall. Okay, so one of the brothers got a crush on um, one of the little uh, red-headed girls, the one with the personality. I feel sorry for them pinch-faced older ones. I would say, too, some of these guys don't look so bad. It's that mutton chop. Mm-mm. No, no, mutton chop. That's why it went out. It gives you this, like, like a thriller mid-transformation tea. Oh, no, she got to fall in love with Lord Burbrook. Right when they turn the lights on at the party and Daphne all happy, her brother come up and say, yeah, you got to marry the creep. Look, just because you can't stand up and marry your hussy don't mean you got to ruin her life. She told him, mm-mm, that ain't what we doing. She should have slapped him a thorough... That thorough sister slap. Oh, Lord. <laughs> we at the redhead's house. So I think we were about to get an awkward 18th century period conversation. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> and apparently the staff is like, child, uh, your cousin is late. And she went on and admitted, when Lord Featherington hears about this, when your father hears about this, mm-hmm. So that's why she went away. And now she's like, well, you're preggers. So I can send you away again. Because I don't want to look at my husband's infidelity. They start arguing, but then we go back to Daphne. And Daphne's out in the garden at this party. And nobody's around. And Nigel comes up. And she's like, not now. He's like, well, as your husband. Oh, she said, you will never be my husband. I will never marry you. Oh, shit, he go to grab her. And, of course, the Duke sees just in time and goes to save her. Actually, the Duke run up too late. She already socked his ass with a good jab. That's what I'm talking about, girl. That good jab. So now Daphne and the Duke get to talk about marrying, and she's like, I don't want to marry him, but I got to get married, and you lucky you ain't got to get married. And he's like, yeah, I heard you ain't had no more offers, girl. Sorry to hear it. And they both can't stand. Lady Whistledown. Okay, so he's like, look, let's act like we together. That way the men will want to pick you off. You can get your suitor and these heifers can leave me alone. But they actually going to fall in love during the whole thing. Okay, all right, Shonda, all right, you. I mean, you, you know. It's predictable, but okay. Lord, this taking everything as shimmy they got them doing... <laughs> If this ain't Gerald Levert and, and Antoinette uh, taking everything video, I know something. Okay, so episode two opens with um, the Duke's birth, and it looks like it's difficult. Oh, Julie Andrews is Lady Whistledown. Okay, I didn't know she was narrating this. So his mama died in childbirth. So the next day, the Duke and Daphne go to the promenade, which is where everybody walks. So she's like, look, I need to get married this season, so we got to go to Six Balls. Meanwhile, in House Redhead, the stepsisters is talking, well, not the stepsisters, but they look like the wicked stepsisters. They talking about the cousin's baby. The mama like, <coughs> so the plucky sister, the one we like, the redheaded one, uh, the youngest, she tells uh, the Natasha Leone sister about the pregnancy. Oh, and she's like, it was a maid that got pregnant, but she ain't married. And Natasha's like, well, how'd she get pregnant without being married? Find out so it don't happen to us. Well, you'll find out. Oh, Lord. So then Natasha Leone's sister walks into the house and she says, how does a woman get pregnant? Okay, and some callers show up. And Daphne, happy, she like, good, the plan working. Oh, Lord, but right as she's giving her bevy of bows, the creeps show up with her brother. <laughs> ha, 
So he sent everybody out and he's like trying to calm Burbrook down. So everybody leave. The mom was like, I know you did not get her engaged to that little bug eye. Really? What my grandbaby's gonna look like? So the brothers say, look, you gonna marry Burbrook whether you like it or not. And then he leave and the mama like, child, you marrying that dude. Burbrook is no match for him. That's true. So now we got a fight club scene with the Duke and one of his old friends. Then the brother show up and he get in the ring and he mad that he trying to court his sister. Then we get a flashback to his pappy. Who is this? Is this Don Cheadle? Or as I like to say, Don Chadal. But yeah, the daddy an asshole. Okay, at House Redhead, we got um, the plucky young sister bringing the cousin some food. And so she's like, so how'd you get preggers? So she said, well, this guy kept buying me little cakes and sending me little notes <laughs> when I was in the choir <laughs> with the queen. Butler come in and say, hey, um, the doctor got an update on your husband. And she said, look, unless he did, I'm busy. You got any good engagements? Because I don't want to hear about no staff heifer. Oh, Lord, the queen then wrote Daphne a note. Oh, wait, no, it's to Daphne's mama, and she's invited to a private tea with the queen in two days' time. Ooh, child, mama said, fuck them pearls. You putting on the family diamonds tonight. Shine bright. So we had a cute little scene where we see how Lady Danbury took um, the duke in and helped him overcome his stuttering problem that his pappy just couldn't understand. So we had another ball, and the Daphne like, child, we got to keep Bainbrook at bay. I need a picnic. I need another ball. We got to make him think you're going to propose so he will leave me alone. Let him find some other husband. What kind of river dance shimmy are they giving? Oh, my God. This dancing, it can, it, it, you, can, you can cut it. Cut it. Lord. So um, the brother goes send the other brother to go dance with the sister so he can have a word with the Duke. And right as they get into chit-chatting, little toad man come up begging to marry that sister. Oh, child, so the Duke go on and put his business in the street and say, you know he was trying to get at your sister and she socked that eye. Mm-hmm. Child, the brother said, oh, okay, I got you. I got your number, hussy. You ain't talking to her no more. He went from getting married to getting buried. Child, now Daphne mad that the Duke done told the brother. So now the toad man trying to run up on the Duke at his house. Big man said, look, I need this one. If you gonna propose, propose. Why you out here messing around over food? So child, he bring up his parents, talking about how his daddy wasn't shit, and then the dude get to whooping that ass. I mean, he just go around asking for ass whoopings. He's the Candace of the show. Drag me, dude, drag me. Okay, so now we got the plucky young sisters together, the Natasha Leon. You know what they're giving me? a young Bette Midler and Lily Tomlin. And she's like, okay, my maid told me it was love that got her in the family way without a husband. So we at the picnic and that brother watching over the sister like a hawk just waiting for the Duke to show up. Oh Lord, here come Burbrook even more beat up while the Duke and Daphne is putting on their little show on the promenade. He didn't shown up with a marriage license. Ooh child, he trying to call her a hoe and shame the family. Oh, God. He said, I'm going to tell Lady Whistledown. They really just going to let him do that? He called the Duke's bluff. The brother wanted to do a duel with Burbrook. Oh, God. So Daphne's just resigned to marrying Nigel. Mm. So now we got the mama at the high tea with the queen. Ooh, child, the queen got that yayo. Yeah. <laughs> She sent her man out to get some fresh snuff because she was like, child, you ain't about to learn my business and tell it. So the queen said, look, I want Daphne to marry the Duke. So then the mama says, look, we going through a little tea with Lady Burbrook, the mama. Oh, okay, they had the tea so that they could get their help in talking to the other help because they like, oh, okay, let's get the gossip on the family and ruin their name. So the recurring theme is people don't listen to women. And so she's like, you know what? We're going to tell Lady Whistledown. They'll believe that ass. Get to gossiping, girls. Child, it's time to get on the Instagram live and break down the tea. According to the blast. That's basically what Lady Whistledown is. According to the blast. So now we got the brother coming to the mom. And he's like, I know you put that out to Lady Whistledown. And she's like, and I'm running the family from now on. 
You ain't doing nothing, and you certainly ain't helping Daphne. Okay, so now we got the sisters having a little touching moment about being scared of getting married and childbirth, and they didn't have epidurals back then. Mm. Sadly, the sister don't buy her little pep talk. Child, we got Daphne and the Duke at another ball. Okay, so she like, look, I gotta take charge of my life. I cannot end up with no pig face man, so we gotta make sure this thing go right, and it take two to make the thing go right. Oh Lord, they're calling each other by their first names. Girl. Okay, I mean, again, ain't nothing else on Love and Hip Hop is at a standstill, so I'm, I'm entertaining this, but I don't know how many more episodes you're gonna get. So we see her out there shimmying with a couple other men and Lady Daphne go up to the Duke and like, mm-hmm, you getting mad. Oh, Lord, and we gonna end the episode with the Duke at, uh, at his father's deathbed. Child, I'm good. I'm good.